Hi there, and let's get to it. Today we're looking at the automated recording function in DaVinci Resolve. In this timeline, we have three audio tracks. The top one dedicated to the dialogue between the two characters, which has yet to be cleaned up by the audio engineer. Underneath that, we have some Atmos sound of a crowd. And beneath that, we have the pub music or soundtrack to the scene. Now play it all together. A Palmonte's in a state station, bloody good one too. You can hear that all three audio tracks are playing simultaneously. I can open up my audio levels using the clip mixer to demonstrate that all of these are set to different levels, with dialogue being just a little bit louder than the pub soundtrack, which is a little bit louder than the crowd. We previously saw that it might be a good idea to fluctuate the volume of something like the soundtrack in order to be stronger when the characters are not talking and to fade away when they are. So I could decide to select this soundtrack clip, drop a keyframe on the volume, have it increase when I can see that the dialogue has ceased, and have it go back down when the character starts talking again. I'm in chemicals and plastics. And now this is not necessarily a bad workflow, but it's a little bit time consuming if you're working on a very long scene or even an interview and you find the need to fluctuate your audio a lot. So automation is going to take care of that for us. I'm going to reset what I've just done, and I'm going to look at my automation controls. So you can expose these controls in two ways. One is to open up your curves editor on either a clip or a track, and you can see this exposes a drop-down menu with the word read in it. When I click on this menu, it then gives me all five automation controls. Beneath that, you have the ability to indicate whether you're going to be automating the volume or the pan. The second way to access these controls is inside of the mixer on the right-hand side. So again, if you look at the respective clip, you'll see the drop-down menu for the automation controls. And you can also switch over to the track mixer, which means that if you're working on something like the dialogue, and I've already amended the volumes on all of these respective clips to make sure that they all match each other in terms of level, but I can still choose to fluctuate these as a single piece of media. But we'll stick to the soundtrack for now. Step one is to pick your clip or track and to enable your automation mode. A good one to start with is touch. Next, you want to make sure that your curve editor is enabled. If you've been using the mixer, then you still have to go down to the timeline and click on the curve editor symbol. The third step is to play back your video and start fluctuating the volume or the pan as the video plays. Hi, I'm Sophie, sorry I'm late, I had to top up my oyster. The chef says the oysters are knockout. And that's all there is to it. As the video plays back, you change the position of the fader and it is recorded live in the form of keyframes on your track. Now at this point you have a few options. If you don't like the recording that you've done, you can just Command Z to undo it and remove it. Or you can switch to a different automation method and make amendments to the automation that you've already made. First of all, Off, as the name implies, will completely disable automation. Read, which is the default setting, will play back your automation levels, but nothing that you do to the faders will impact them. However, you will be able to adjust the individual keyframes of the automation using your mouse. Then we have touch, which is what we use to make this recording. Touch will start recording automation as soon as you move the fader for the first time, and it will stop recording when you release the control. And what's interesting is that a brief transition will be generated between the last recorded level on the timeline and the new one. So that way you don't have any jarring changes in volume. Next we have Latch. Latch will also start recording your automation as soon as you move the fader, but as soon as you release the fader, it will continue to record the automation at the last adjusted level, which will overwrite all your previous automations and keyframes. And the last option we have is Write, which is almost identical to Latch, except it doesn't wait for you to start making changes in the fader to start recording the automation. Instead, it will immediately start overwriting your previous keyframes and will respond to your fader when you move it. It's arguably the most aggressive of the options, which is why by default it automatically switches to touch once you stop playing back your media. If you don't like the fact that it switches from right to touch automatically, you can always turn this off by right-clicking inside the timeline and deselecting set to touch after right. Thank you for watching and happy automation.